In this video, I will show you how you can connect to a remote headless Wayland session using RDP or remote desktop connection. Those were a lot of fancy words, but basically we will just connect to a remote desktop. The remote desktop will run inside a Docker container and that's why it is headless, because containers have no displays. In order to show the desktop on the local machine running Windows, we will connect to it using remote desktop connection. The desktop itself that will run inside the Linux container will be a very simple one. In this video we will use the reference Wayland compositor called Weston. But before we start, welcome to the channel. Here you can find topics about Linux, Docker, game dev or software development in general, or short, agile dev art. If you like that kind of content, then give a like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. All the links from this video are down in the description and also down there are the timestamps, so you can skip any part if you want. First I will briefly show you the docker file, then we will build the docker image and then we will run it and connect to it. As you can see docker desktop is already running and back here in Visual Studio Code, I have prepared a few docker files and in all of them we will run Weston. They all look more or less the same. For the base image I'm using Ubuntu and then I'm installing a few tools that we will use in this video, among others the Western Reference Wayland Compositor. Then I'm setting up a new user by the name TestUser with a very secure password, I'm changing the working directory and then I'm executing a few commands as this user. First I'm generating the RDP keys which are necessary for the remote desktop connection. Then I am creating two directories which Weston needs and I'm also setting the user permissions. Next I'm creating the script that will run Weston. It will use the RDP backend because we want to connect to it. And it will also run xwayland, but more on that later. Then I'm setting the environment variable that Weston needs. I'm also exposing the port 3389 which is the default RDP port. Then if you want you can start the dbus service, but for this simple demo we actually don't need it. And we can start Weston without dbus run, like that. But what we need to do, we need to start Weston, this script right here. In addition I'm also starting the bash shell, just so the container stays in the loop. So let's build this image, first save it, then go to terminal, new terminal. Here is the terminal, I'm already in the right folder, and write docker build dash f and then the path to the docker file which is in my case this one here then dash t and the name of the image which i called docker dash weston and a dot for the current folder so let's build the image run perfect here is the image let's run it and let's bind the port to 3389 so we can connect to the container through localhost and let's run it container is running and now let's connect to it. Remote desktop connection, we want localhost and just connect. I trust this one. This is the default western desktop or desktop shell. It's just a gray screen with a top bar up here. By default the only thing we can do here is to open the western terminal. Everything looks very basic, it's also designed to be very lightweight, but it is surprisingly customizable and I will show you a good example in this video. First let's try to run a few tools, like for instance Gnome Text Editor. Here it is. Let's see if it works. So it seems to work as it should. Let's try to run something else, LX Task. So here we can see the tasks that are currently running here. Among others we can also see X Wayland. X Wayland is an X display server and Weston is a Wayland display server. Weston can only communicate with native Wayland clients. On Linux a lot of older applications still need an X server to be displayed. That's why Weston spawned the X Wayland application, which is a native Wayland client, but also an X server, so that older applications that depend on an X server can be displayed properly. So X Wayland acts like an adapter for old applications that cannot communicate with Wayland and Weston directly. Now how can we recognize those applications that still need an X server? There is a very handy tool for that, called XEyes, this one. As long as the mouse cursor is over an application that requires an X server, the eyes will follow it. So if I move the mouse over the desktop, the eyes are not following it, because this is running on Wayland. Let's try the task manager, and here you can see, the eyes are following the mouse. So the task manager requires an X server. Let's try the GNOME text editor, 
this one is native Wayland because the eyes are not following it and also the western terminal is native Wayland because the eyes are not following it. Since we are running RDP I can also close the connection then reconnect again and the desktop is still there as we left it. Since Weston is designed to be very lightweight, we can also run a single full screen application inside Weston. Let's see how this works. Stop the container and let's check the next Docker file, Weston Kiosk. This one is very similar as the previous one. The main difference is that this one is using a kiosk shell instead of the default desktop shell. So this one starts Weston and then starts the Weston terminal in full screen mode. Now I know this is not the usual way how to start an application in Weston kiosk mode, but for me starting it in the same script as Weston is good enough. Now in addition here I also installed Firefox, because we will try to run Firefox in kiosk mode as well. And another difference is that we are not using xwayland here, because Weston terminal and Firefox don't need an X server, so we don't need to run xwayland. Let's build this image. Perfect. Here is the image, let's run it and map the port to localhost, run. Container is running, let's connect to it, remote desktop connection, localhost and connect. This is now the western terminal running in full screen mode. I will run Firefox here, let's try it out. And now we have Firefox in full screen mode. Let's see if it works, YouTube. So YouTube seems to work. Let's play a video. It runs very smooth. Let's try full screen. Also no problems here, although I have now two heads. So overall the performance is really great. This is not the first time that I'm running a browser inside a Docker container and displaying it on Windows. If you are interested how to run a browser or any other GUI application inside a Docker container and display it on Windows, then you can check out my previous video, the link to the video is up there or down in the description. This was an example how to run a single full screen application that's running on Weston. Now let's see how we can run a customized version of the Weston desktop. This time I already built the image, which is this one, Docker Weston desktop. First I will show you the desktop and then I will show you the Docker file and the code behind it. So let's run this one and map the port. Remote desktop connection, localhost and connect. Now this is the customized version of the Western desktop. As you can see we have a wallpaper and we also moved the top bar down here. And I also added a few more applications to the panel. We already saw the Western terminal. Now we have also the file manager or GNOME text editor. This has more of a desktop feel now. Or I can start Firefox. And if this isn't enough, let's run the full Ubuntu GNOME shell. So yes, this full Ubuntu desktop is now running inside this window here. Let's try to open LibreOffice. And here it is. LibreOffice. And it works without problems. Let's see how we configured Weston to do all of this. I will close it. Here is the docker file and it's very similar as the one that we used before. The main difference is that I'm installing Ubuntu desktop, that I'm setting additional environment variables which are necessary for the Ubuntu desktop, running a few more services, dbus and systemd login d, and regarding western customizations I added a western ini file, which is a western configuration file. And here it is how it looks like. With this you can customize a lot of stuff like setting the background image, or the background color, the panel color, panel position, then setting a window animation. The windows are now opening with a zoom animation. And I also customized the mouse cursor. Then I have the launchers, which are the icons on the bottom panel. I have the western terminal, Nautilus the file manager, Gnome text editor, Firefox, and last but not least, the full Gnome shell. You can also set environment variables here, as I did for instance for the GNOME shell window size. Now these are not all the options that you can use. Down in the description you can find a link to the Western ini documentation. There you should find a lot more options. The container is still running. Let's try to connect to the desktop again. Remote desktop connection, localhost and connect. And we are back in as we left it. 
If you like my videos and also want to support me, I also have a Patreon page. The link to the page is up there or down in the description. I really appreciate every support I get and it's because of your support that I can make videos like this one. So thank you very much. This is not the first time that I'm running Ubuntu inside a Docker container. So if you're interested how to run Ubuntu inside a Docker container and connect to it using remote desktop connection, then you can check out my previous video. The link to the video is up there or down in the description. And that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, if you like my content, if you think it's helpful, then please give a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.